I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving into a powerful book. It is called The Love Fire, a memoir of codependency, narcissism, and the pursuit of self-love. It's written by a terrific author. Her name is Dr. Karen LeCount. This gripping memoir explores the painful dynamics of codependency and narcissism while shedding light on the journey to true self-love. The doctor's story is a powerful reminder that healing begins with confronting our own truths. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing this terrific book. The links are beneath this interview. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Yes, thank you, Logan, for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Excited to have you on the show. I think this book's going to be so helpful to a lot of folks out there who might be experiencing similar issues. Share with us the significance of the title, The Love Liar, and what it means to you personally. Well, most people would look at that and assume that I'm talking about, you know, the narcissist that I dealt with, but it's really myself and codependency and taking responsibility for my role in the relationships that I've had with people who have narcissistic tendencies, because first of all, I don't believe that we can, we give up our power if we sit in blame and calling other people names. And so the, when we can take, we take back our power when we can take responsibility for our role in any situation in our life. So myself being the love liar, and <clears throat> I believe that that started at a very young age with the sudden death of my mother, because I had no idea how to love myself and was dependent on other people loving me. And so I became very much a people pleaser in order to get their love. And so I was lying to myself starting from a very young age about what love really was. It is such a traumatic thing to lose your mother at any age, uh, mm -hmm. let alone a young age. And uh, that relationship with you have with your mother kind of helps you form relationships throughout your life. And losing that relationship is very, very profound. So we can see how that impacted you, no doubt. How did your marriage impact your understanding of codependency and narcissism? Well, I had married someone who was very insecure. And I, being very empathic, and as an empathic person, you tend to assume everybody approaches life the same way that you do, that they uh, love the same way that you do, and that they are as honest and open and really compassionate towards others as you are. And, <clears throat> and when I had come to realize very, very, very slowly over the course of our 27 years together that that just was not how he operated. It was devastating because I realized that all the love in our marriage was coming from me, um, but yet I wasn't giving any of it to myself. And so he really taught me a fabulous lesson around the idea of self-love because I have come to learn through writing my book and really studying narcissism and codependency that the narcissist and the, the codependent are the opposite sides of the same coin. Both of them really have the same dysfunction around self-love. It's just the narcissist manipulates others in order to get that love, whereas the codependent manipulates by giving so much of their love in order to get love. And it's, it's the same very destructive, dysfunctional dynamic around the idea oh. of self-love. One's giving too much, the other's not giving enough at all. 
Right. And uh, it becomes, like you said, almost like a vicious cycle in a way. Um, and I think you struck upon something very, very true there. When you're younger in particular, you don't realize that not everybody views the world as you do, has the same intentions that you do, and has the same heart and soul that you do. And uh, people view things very, very differently and often are manipulative of the people who are empathic and who are good hearted. You are also dealing with an autoimmune condition in your journey as well. Tell me how that impacted things. Well, that <clears throat> was something that started not too long after my marriage. And it was a condition uh, called ulcerative colitis that would flare up. And to such a degree, it would flare up that I would be hospitalized hmm. um, you know, several times over the years. Um, but in any case, even just getting as sick as I did, I'd be uh, unable to work for months at a time. And I was the primary breadwinner. I was you know, some could argue the reason that my ex-husband actually married me was to pay the bills. And so he would get very upset with me um, when I wasn't able to work. And he had zero compassion for what I was going through. He had no, he, he was not a champion for me in any regard with helping me with my diet or helping me with the doctors or understanding what I needed to do. I had to take care of myself as well as the kids and um, without any support whatsoever from him. So I would heal myself of a flare up and then it would show up again another few years later. And it wasn't until it had gotten so bad that I needed a blood transfusion and he had needed to pick me up from the hospital one evening. I, I was admitted to the hospital for an emergency blood transfusion and I waited for 10 hours in the hospital. They Then they couldn't find a blood match for me. So they told me I had to go home and wait, come back the next day to get this blood transfusion. And so my husband had to come and pick me up and he was just so so horrible. <laughs> he was just very passive aggressively unhappy about having to come and pick me up. I had ruined his day. He had plans. He had to cancel them because he had to take care of the kids. And he, um, he just made it very clear that my being sick was a problem to him. And that's what really opened my eyes finally to what I was dealing with with him. And it was what had initiated my first request for a divorce. But it actually took me another 18 months to follow through with it, because he had been manipulating me at that time, he was having an affair with someone else during that time. And he he was desperate to hang on to me. Because again, I, I, I paid the bills, I financed his his dream of touring and I'm in a music. Um, he was playing in a band and playing in Australia and Japan and Germany and all over the United States. And I was financing all of that. So it was very important to him that he maintain our marriage. And yeah, you had had enough. You had that turning point. You saw how callous he was towards you when you were suffering and in need. And fortunately, you found the strength to get out of your marriage after 20 years. Enough is enough. Um, and now you've put together pretty much a program for helping others in that situation. You've got this book, but you've also got the uh, Loving Yourself Whole program as well. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Well, <clears throat> What I had realized was that when you, when I got out of the marriage and began to fully investigate narcissism, because I didn't actually um, really settle on the, the idea that he was narcissistic. 
it took a lot more study after the divorce to discover that and the codependency and how I was still caught up in codependent patterns, even though I had gotten out of the marriage. And in fact, the ulcerative colitis flared up in a very major way two years after the marriage in which um, it, it almost took my life. It was, it was, it was where I really began to recognize the lack of self-love that I had had. And so that moment, just being in the ambulance with the second of four blood transfusions being infused into my veins um, was when I realized that, wow, this whole problem is just my own lack of self-love and so that's that journey has led to the development of this program loving yourself whole and taking my whole spiritual study that I had been going on and to since my adulthood you know for the last 30 years I have been studying who we are why we're here why we suffer the way that we do. And I've put all of that, all that I have learned about that into this program called Loving Yourself Whole, which I feel goes much deeper than just the notion of self-love, which in, in normal um, general society, I think self-love is considered anything that we do is self-care. But self-care is a component of self-love. It's not actually self-love. And self-love has to do more with connecting to who we are at a much deeper level, who, who we are at our source. And so my program dives into that, really understanding who we are at our basic core and how to love that person and how to manage our energy when we may not be loving ourselves as we should be when we have this internal dialogue going on in our head and why we have that internal dialogue and how to shift that and how to have compassion for ourselves when we can't and we're beating ourselves up because it's always it's always a, a process of just constant need to self-love is not a one and done kind of thing it is process and yeah it has to be integrated into your life mm -hmm. yeah. yeah without a doubt how can people find out about the loving yourself whole program my website is drkarenlacount.com that's just d-r-c-a-r-i-n-l-a-c-o-u-n-t.com okay, wonderful the name of the book we've been focusing on today is The Love Fire, a memoir of codependency, narcissism, and the pursuit of self-love. It is a powerful book, a gripping memoir that explores the painful dynamics of codependency and narcissism while shedding light on the journey to finding true self-love. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate your time, your wisdom, and your insight for sure. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. Thank you.